Thanks, everybody. Uh, my name is Ian Slater, the founder and CEO of, of Libero Copper and Gold. Uh, what, what, we, um, what this company is, as many of you know, is we, together with my partner, Leo Hathaway, we founded this company a couple years ago to acquire large porphyry copper and gold assets in the Americas that had a lot of historical work on them and, and no fatal flaws. And so far, we've acquired three projects in uh, Canada, the U.S., and Colombia. We have um, about a $13 million market cap still. And because we've, we've spent the last year acquiring these projects and drill permitting them, and we haven't started drilling any of them yet, we're starting drilling our first project just next month. So I think once, once people get to, to know our company and see the results we can get from the projects, um, well, well, that share price will increase. And we just completed a $4 million financing to fund this year's work, and that'll fund us for the next 12 months. And management owns about 15% of the company. So our background, uh, myself, um, myself, I've uh, I was managing partner of Arthur Anderson and then Ernst Young's mining practices, and I've been doing this for about ten years or so, acquiring mineral assets. My partner Leo has uh, been Ross Beatty's VP Exploration for about that same amount of time, and uh, he he was the the VP Exploration and did the due diligence and ran the drill programs on all of the the Lumina copper assets in the last cycle that were uh, very successful. Um, and then our board, Rob Tease, is the uh, head of the technical committee and um, has a great career also. He was head of major projects at Placer Dome and uh, then put uh, Mount Milligan into terrain, which had a successful exit. And, and Bill Bennett joined us uh, last year. Bill Bennett was the Minister of Mines here in BC for 16 years before. And uh, he's, uh, he's got great experience with permitting and, and First Nations relations. These are some of the wins that Rob and Leo have had in the past, and together they've sold projects for around two and a half billion dollars. And these are our main two technical people. I love slides. These next two or three slides, because they really show what we're trying to do on the copper side. Is is um, uh, the, this is a list of all of the major copper assets sold in South America in the last cycle. So they typically sell for about four hundred million dollars and about four pennies per pound, and. Going forward, really, the the grade for these large copper projects is 0.4. That's uh, that's the new the new standard for for large tonnage projects, and the ones with stars beside were the ones that Leo was the VP exploration on. Here's where we are today. So compared to four pennies in a bull market um, with a de-risked asset, where this is a, a data set of all of the copper developers in the Americas and medium is only 0.6 of a penny. So a long way to go for the, for the whole set. The boxes at the top of our screen are, um, are actually, you know, I'm gonna use this laser they showed me how to use. These boxes at the top of the screen are, uh, are the pounds of copper that each of these developers has in the ground. Um, this is the medium is 0.6 here. Um, Libero, as we start drilling these projects this year, and we're going to drill two of the three this year, uh, we'll get back up, get to that medium as people get to know us and we have results. And then all as a, a riding tide as we all go into a copper market. And I believe that we were into a bull market for a copper market just starting in February before, before the lockdown. And we will be back there within six to 12 months and, and much bigger. These supply and demand um, uh, fundamentals have not changed at all and will be more so when we come out of this, this downturn. This is those same, those same companies on the last slide, um, comparing the actual projects underlying those valuations. And these are ranked by, by grade. But you look at the, at the ones that are around Makoa. I mean, all these projects have, have some well-known issue with them, whether it's metallurgy or, or location. So compared, to, compared to, the, to the world of copper development projects that are available in, in the Americas, Makoa compares very well. So Makoa was discovered in the 1970s. Um, it got to a pre-feasibility study in 1983. So we know that there's no fatal flaws with the project. We know it's good metallurgy. Um, we uh, acquired it from B2 Gold about 18 months ago. And they love the project. It's just a copper project and they're a gold company. And they, they, uh, they had lots of offers for the project, but they like working with us because I knew them well from my 10 years in Colombia where they were working and, and had experience with permitting and, and social relations there. And of course, Leo's experience de-risking these type of large porphyry projects. Here's where we are just at the, in Southern Colombia in the Jurassic Belt there. 
um, lots of lots of big projects in that same belt and those same rocks in Ecuador across the border. And of course, we're in uh, through those whole Andes. There's many many projects, and I selected some on the list on the right hand side here. Um, and and Maco is great compares well to lots of operating mines. Most of these are, are operating mines in in uh, neighboring countries. Overall, we have about a billion tons of unconstrained resource. Uh, Pitkin's put a pit constraint around it. Um, it's 636 million tons of 0.45 copper equivalent, but with only a 0.26 to one strip ratio. So a, a very good strip ratio. There's a cross section of, of where the opportunity is. So we're gonna be drilling this in the fall. We're gonna drill our Canadian gold project first this summer, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, what's interesting here is, is you've got all these high grade drill results right below the current pit outline. So you can see it on the right hand side too, the second high grade core. So we're going to we're going to step out here and drill where it's never been drilled before. And uh, it looks like it continues to the east. Well, um, if we can convert this area here from, uh, you know, from waste rock to to uh, ore, and it's and it, it looks like a good opportunity to do so, we can get that pit grabbing that second high grade core at depth, which will really change the tonnage. It's already a great size of 600 million tons, but that could add a few hundred million tons of ore and at higher grade. Uh, the other opportunity we have is, is we've discovered uh, another copper and soils anomaly to 500 meters to the east of Makoa. So this is Makoa where the entire current resource is. Uh, another similar scale and, and grade uh, copper and soils anomaly that we're going to drill as well. That's it for Makoa. Just briefly on Tamichi, our, our copper project in Colorado, so we can get to our, our gold project, is... Um, uh, this is pretty similar to uh, to to Makoa. You can drive on that picture there. You can drive right to uh, the project, right to the drill sites. Here's uh, where we are. We're at, in Colorado, which we're close to to Freeport's big Molly mines, but but really not not a lot of copper porphyries in in Colorado. But comparing to neighboring states, we compare well to a lot of operating mines there in uh, in grade and and the tonnage wise at, at Tamichi, it's really open in every direction. It's a lot bigger project than what's been drilled historically. They were pretty shallow drill holes. Here's a, you can see uh, the shallow drill holes, almost all lending and mineralization and, and, um, and pretty consistent mineralization along in, in the deposit that's been drilled so far. So as I already said, so far 700 million tons and open. Here's Big Red, our gold project. Let me look at my timer because I, I did set my timer, Gwen, I'm good, is um, gold. Uh, so this is Big Red. The opportunity here was it had a lot of historical work like the other projects, but not drilling. So it had 35 different work programs, mostly in the 1960s. So a lot of surface sampling, but it was never consolidated into one into one um, package. So with one company operating it. So that's part of the opportunity here. And the other one was was no one had ever digitized this entire data set and, and analyzed it as a whole. Uh, when we did that, there were uh, some of the highest grade copper and soils and gold and soils anomalies in the entire Golden Triangle. So that's part of the opportunity. And the other part is the glaciers are treating. So this is on this picture is um, Ridge, uh, one of our main gold targets at Big Red. And this is what we're going to be drilling this summer. And this just a few years ago, you can look on Google Earth. This was all covered in a glacier. So as that's retreating, last summer we sampled this, and and there's outcropping mineralization here and here that people have not seen before. Historically, all the samples were along the ridge line here, where it was the only place they had access to. So here's where we are. The gray line is the high is the road. So so we're um, we're the same age rocks as as Newcrest Red Chris and Newmont Scalar Creek. Um, there's a lot of similarities to our project, to, uh, to GT Gold's Totoga project, especially uh, Saddle South and Saddle North. Uh, and you can drive right to our project, which is uh, you know, pretty unusual in this part of the world. Down at the bottom here is the road that ends at a placer mine. So this has uh, been operating for decades here, mining, uh, mining ore from the Barrington River. We've sampled all of this area, and the, the gold is definitely coming down this creek and uh, and this creek here from Ridge and Poker, because um, you, you, when you sample the other streams, you can see that's concentrated there. What we're looking at here is the purple is uh, Mag High. We just flew a, a, a ZTEM survey actually, and right here to the to the south and to the north, parallel to the Mag High, are conductivity highs. So that underlies right exactly where Ridge, our highest grade gold target, is. 
So what, what these green outlines are is the uh, is contoured at one gram per ton gold for ridge and east ridge. The, the ridge actually averages two grams per ton gold in soils. And lots of lots of 20 gram per ton rock samples. And then we channel sampled five, 50 meters of five grams last year. And then Copper Bowl is three kilometers long, contoured at 500 ppm copper. Um, interesting up here where the we had another high conductivity right here with very limited geochem samples so we're going to sample that uh, this summer as well and down here there's a there's a uh, conductivity high in um in limestones so that's an interesting target as well that we'll look at this year and then poker is interesting that's a, a huge glacier here is retreating a different glacier than what was than the ridge one and it's dropping out um boulders from underneath it so there's hundreds of boulders here gra um, grading like uh up to 200 grams gold coming out from the toe of that of that uh, glacier so a close-up of this area where we focused our work is our sampling from last summer. So we have 19 um, multi-element anomalies that, uh, that we uh, discovered last summer. And so this is where we have copper, gold, and silver all uh, high-grade and, and overlaying each other. Terry was a new discovery that hadn't been sampled in the past. So this is a new porphyry target up here that was uh, we targeted that from, from uh, a mag anomaly. Um, Poker was the one I talked about where each of these red squares are, are high-grade gold from boulders coming from this glacier. And then Ridge is the main target that we're going to be drilling first. So ME2 is the top of that ridge with a lot of historical sampling and where we had some great results last summer as well. And then ME3 and 4 are, are between those three remnants of the glaciers in light blue here. So first drill ridge, and then there's lots of other targets which we're going to uh, focus in on through the summer and hopefully get to drilling them as well this summer. This is our final slide here is, um, I took GT, this from GT Gold's website on the left. So this is um, uh, copper and soils at Saddle South. I took the same from, from Ridge, um, so same grade, same scale. Um, same color scheme, and it looks very, very comparable. But there's more comparables than just that as well. It's just north of it where they have their saddle, uh, saddle north discovery. It's a, a porphyry that looks similar to Copper Bowl and both beside Mag Highs as well and similar type of rocks. So a lot of similarities and exciting drill target for this summer. So just to summarize, what we have is, is we have a couple projects with large, large copper resources, which... Uh, which don't have large holding costs. So we have those as we're going into a bull market for copper next year or later this year. And in the meantime, we'll be drilling these really high grade gold targets in Northern BC this summer. And that work program is starting in a couple of weeks with the, with the drilling in June. And that's it. Thanks, Gwen.